Hello and welcome to the Grenade Creations podcast. This is episode 57. My name is Kirsty and I am coming to you from a very wet and windy west coast. It is horrible outside. I was out this morning, I had to go to the post office and it was unpleasant to be outside. We've just got over Storm Kira and we are now braced by Storm Dennis because uh, the UK have decided that they must copy the states and name our storms which we never used to do. So Storm Dennis has hit the west coast and it is very grey, very grey, very windy and just generally horrible to be outside. So very glad to be back home. Uh, I don't normally record on a Saturday but my partner Scott is feeling a wee bit under the weather. He caught a cold um, thanks to Storm Kira. Uh, he got soaked on the way into work so he is not feeling the greatest and so we are spending the weekend apart because I have a very weakened immune system so I'd probably catch the cold off of him and uh, I don't really want to get sick before I go away next week. So I didn't record last weekend, wasn't feeling too great myself so recording this weekend which kind of works perfect because otherwise my recording schedule would be next weekend and next weekend is going to be the run around like a headless chicken making sure I've got everything packed for going to the States on the 25th. So that's a very big ramble to get us started but yes this is episode 57 my name is Kirsty and you can find me on Ravelry as Grenache underscore creations you can find me on Ravelry as little-b and there's also the group on Ravelry where we have posts for the GC 2020 stash bus which I'll go into in a moment and also I've actually not long started a thread for swapping leftover yarn and I'll go into that a wee bit later on as well. So feel free to join that group, you just go into either the forums or the groups tab and search Grenaic Creations Podcast. I nearly said Grenaic underscore but that's my Instagram. So yeah, um, feel free to come along and join us in there. There's a good amount of chatter going on, uh, a lot of chatter going on for the stash bust. Feel free to jump in and join us. This is not one of those things you need to be in it from the beginning. So yeah, I'm wearing my finished object guys. Sorry, I should have said we're just going to jump straight in. I am wearing my finished object. I am loving my hat. This is a brioche cat hat. Didn't really follow any patterns. I got a starting point from one or two patterns and then I just went with it. Um, so this is an extra long version. I don't want to take it off because I've kind of got my hair in a nice sitting for now. Um, you should have seen me when I was outside, I just, it just went everywhere. At one point my hat nearly blew off, which I thought was quite interesting because I had my hat and my hood up and it just I could feel it sliding up my head. But yeah, this is um, made out of scraps. The neon is the exact same neon in my jumper and can I just say I finally blocked it. I've had this off the needles since some point. <laughs> I finally blocked it, wove in the majority of the ends, I realised I've got some ends in the arms I still need to do and I really enjoy wearing this sweater. So this is a Sunset Highway sweater. I'm really really enjoying wearing it and it's really spurred me on to make more sweaters. So for a long time I thought that because I am plus size that Knitting a sweater for myself was going to be too much money, too much effort and way too much knitting time. And it was something I heard on the Tipsy Knits podcast and reading across Instagram is that everybody is knitworthy. Every body, like every body type is knitworthy. It's just unfortunate that if I want to make it in certain yarn it could be quite an expensive sweater. So. That 
spurred me on and gave me the kick up the backside I needed to actually knit myself a sweater and this is not the first one I've done. I've done the five dollars in Paris uh, which was okay. I knit it in the acrylic iron that you can get with just a wee bit of wool which is fine. I actually really enjoy that yarn. It's not that I'm being a yarn snob. It's just I made the sleeves very short and I don't have any of the yarn left to make it longer. Um, but I do like that sweater. It's quite, it's nice and long. It's almost like a tunic. And then I made that one, which for the life of me, I now can't remember what it's called. Nope, can't remember. Not coming to me. I made that one, and again made the short, the sleeves short, and you can see the line where I just introduced a brand new skein of yarn. No swap. No. Great, no change, no gradual change into it, nothing like it does look pretty bad, but I do like I still like wearing it. But that was a learning curve for me as well because there's a lot of bagginess in the back because I didn't think about the distribution of my stitches because I have a larger front than I do of my back. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so that was a bit of a learning curve for me as well. So then I made this one. And I made this one when I was... Well, I started this one when I was skinnier. Uh, like when I had lost a bunch of weight. And then I put on the weight because I stopped caring about being a certain weight. And um, it didn't fit around my tummy anymore. So I ripped back. Sorry, I'm opening some juice. I ripped back the sweater until about under the bust and then with my help of my friend Ellen I put some increases in on the side so that it would flare out at the bottom so it would fit over my stomach and now I love it, I absolutely love this sweater I recently only just got it off the blocking boards like I said and yeah I know I love how I've gone from talking about my hat to my sweater but it is the exact same yarn that's how I'm tying that in so yep Wearing my Sunset Highway sweater and wearing my finished awesome brioche hat. I wore this out today and it's the first time I've worn it outside. And I walked into the mall in my town and instantly a woman just, like an old woman was just staring at me with this absolute look of disapproval. Because I took my hood down and then all, of it, all you can see is the ears. So she was just like, which was really funny, it really made me chuckle. Um, and the other looks of people, like the looks I got from other people, uh, was just, it's, I find it really funny. I, I've always been that person that has no problem wearing anything with cat ears. Like I used to have a headband and it had, it was just a headband, a standard everyday metal headband. And then it had fabric cat ears on it and I'd wear that around and the looks and the like the snide comments and the like quietly chatting to your friend to point it out it really makes me giggle it makes me want to do it more like to wear it more uh, so I have no problem wearing this out in public and getting the looks and the snide comments and everyone kind of trying to whisper quietly to their friend to point it out it really it does make my day I'm not even gonna lie uh, and the grey <coughs> is left over of my own hand dyed so it was it felt really good to use up stash <coughs> sorry you ever know you ever get that way where you just breathe in wrong and it goes down one of the wrong tubes <coughs> so yeah um move in a wee bit closer you can see it uh, for a while I wasn't really sure which way around I was going to wear it, whether the green was going to be the prominent colour or whether the grey was going to be the prominent colour. But the entire time I was knitting it, I was knitting it with the grey being the prominent colour. And I always liked the idea of flipping this up. So I originally put out um, a poll on my Instagram to see what people's opinions were and a lot of people initially started going with the opposite from what I was knitting it 
um, we're saying that the green should be up here, like as the prominent colour, and the flipped up should be the grey. But then everyone started going with my original, which is the what I have it as just now. And I really, really like it. I can always turn it inside out, um, but I do have the three needle bind off line at the top of the hat in the green. Um, three needle bind off in two colour brioche. <coughs> Not the funnest thing to try and get your head around at like 10 o'clock at night. Not gonna lie. But I certainly wasn't gonna try and do like a kitchener stitch or something. So three needle bind off it was. And I've got to admit, not a single end is woven in on this hat because I don't know how to weave in brioche. So at the moment there's ends tucked in here and then there's the ends on the inside of the hat as well. And that doesn't bother me at all until I take the hat off and the ends dangle down. So if anyone can point me in the right direction to a tutorial... I wonder if you can see her. That's my cat, Eli. So if anyone can point me in the right direction for a brioche end weaving in tutorial, please pop it in the comments below and I will duly take that on board and try and get these ends woven in. So yeah, that's technically my only finished object. On the last podcast I said I had an, an extra finished object that I didn't know where it was, so couldn't show you it. Uh, but here is, with ends still to be woven in in true cursy fashion, here is the very small leg warmers I made for going to the States. Uh, for those that might be new to the podcast, I'm going to New York for the very first time, just over a week with my partner. Super excited, super nervous. Oh, I must have woven an end in. I did weave an end in. What on earth? Taking myself by surprise. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to New York for the first time with my partner in just over a week for five nights, six days. Super nervous, super excited. And the nervous thing's just down to chronic illness. But... I've decided to deck myself out in knitwear, so these are going to be doubled over and they're going to <clears throat> they're going to go over the join between my shoe and my leggings so that my I don't get a draft around that area. Um so that's the intention, whether or not I'm gonna need it because the Monday before we fly is to get to eleven degrees which is so much better than it is today, where it's minus six. But I did only just check, so that makes it like they're six o'clock in the morning, so it does get warmer, obviously, during the day. So those are my... I'm going to call them boot cuffs, to be honest, because they're definitely not leg warmers, or ankle... Look, more ankle warmers, really, than anything. So yeah, those are what I should have shown you in the last podcast, but didn't, because I didn't know where they were, couldn't be bothered trying to find them. <laughs> and here is someone else's fin- oh, I thought it was snowing there, it's just the way the wind blew up the water. Um, here's a finished object that someone made me and I can't believe this, honest to god. I got a message out of the blue from Naomi of Knit Me Sane, who you all know I love her stuff. Um, and she was saying that she had something she wanted to send me and I was kind of like, what? That she'd made me something she wanted to send me and I was like, nobody ever makes me stuff, like, what? And she didn't tell me what it was, she just told me it was for when I go to New York because she knows how cold it can be, she wanted me to be nice and warm. Guys, she made me a cowl, and I'm pretty sure this is her own yarn, and oh, I've seen it last night, Cosmic, Cosmic something, let me double check, dum 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 So yeah, this is the first time somebody's made me something, 
um, just on their own, like off their own accord, without a swap being involved or a birthday or Christmas, just out of sheer kindness and wanting to make sure that I was not going to feel the cold because she had experienced it really cold when she was there. And it took my breath away that there are still, I know there's still this kindness in the world, but it's so rarely seen nowadays that it really caught me off guard. So yeah, it's the Cos Cosmos colorway, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure it's her own yarn. It looks like the Cosmos colorway. And it's lovely. I wore this out last weekend. Uh, it's just so snug and so nice as well because I can tuck my hair in and then have it like you all I, I say you all like I expect you all to have known like have made a cowl or have worn a cowl but like you can have this and then your coat on top of it and it keeps you nice and warm and it's so beautiful and it's so soft and squishy I love it. I actually love it. And the thought behind it as well was really, really nice. So, thank you Naomi. It's beautiful. I love it. And it's definitely coming to the States with me. I kind of have my, my suitcase already packed, so now that I've shown it on the podcast, I can put it in. I'm one of those people that I like to be super, super, super prepared. My suitcase has actually been packed since the 25th of January. I don't leave until the 25th of February, so yeah, I'm that person. So that's someone else's finished object, I again, I did not knit this, Naomi knit this. So go check out Naomi's website, knitmesane.co.uk and you can get this colourway for yourself. Isn't it pretty? Look at those colours. Okay, works in progress. I only have two to show you. There are so many more than that in project bags in my room, but I only have two that I have been actively working on. So I'll show you, and oh, now I finished, finished one and it's next door. I'll pause and go and get it actually, because I think it's quite nice to show off. So, um, on the last podcast I told you about the socks I had cast on when I was headed to the hospital with my friend and I managed to get the first one finished. I love this, how this yarn has knit up. And then the heel and the cuff has been knit out of a random mini that I have received in a swap at some point. This could be a yarn that I have received from Aileen. If not, very possibly Ellen, if not, someone else. <laughs> I know, not very useful at all, but it's really gorgeous. It's kind of like a, I want to say an olive green, but I've never eaten an olive in my life. So I could be wrong. So yeah, just a random mini for the heel and the toe. Fish lips kiss heel. Uh, this was a toe up sock. I start with 12 stitches, do three rounds of increase, and then I start doing a plain round, an increase round, a plain round, an increase round until I get to 64 stitches for the full thing. And then I work until it gets to the line on the template for the fish lips kiss heel, pop the heel in, and then knit as much as I want. And then I think I've done 20 rounds of 2x2 two two ribbing with the super stretchy bind off. So yeah, that's sock number one. And then this is all I have on sock number two. Not very much at all. Um, a lot of my focus had gone into finishing my hat and on the next project I will show you. So the yarn is Lady Rainicorn by Gamer Crafting. I really really love it. I love how this is knitting up. 
I will be offering what's left of this yarn in the swap thread on my Ravelry group. Um, I reckon I will have 50 grams left, if not just a wee bit more, of this yarn to offer up any swap. It does have Stellina in it, so people should bear that in mind. Please don't message me asking for the swap, I will be listing it on my Ravelry in the thread that is on the group and it's basically first come first serve basis but I'll only be offering it up when I finish the socks so those are they're not seeing as much love as I would like them to I was working my projects on a basis of one project a day and then moving on to another one the following day excuse me and that's purely because I did have so many I wanted to get through but I got this one finished which was pretty much my main one and then the next project which is the test knit uh, that had a lot of my focus and currently has a lot of my focus and so the sock kind of fell to the wayside but that's okay I'm not bothered so let's show the test knit so happy with how this is progressing. I'm really, really loving this sweater. This is the Demetrius, Dem Demetria, Demetria sweater. Uh, it's the test knit for Verity of Truly Hooked. Last night I managed to get one of the shoulders bound off. It is a cropped sweater and this is how it's currently looking. So it's a cropped sweater and it's off the shoulder, like it's a dropped shoulder. So this is how it is currently looking. So that's how, where it's going to sit. So it's going to sit on my natural waist. I have quite a high natural waist, just here. That's my waist. And so I've got one shoulder finished. And I just need to do the front on this side. Am I, where, am I holding this the wrong way? No, I'm not. So I just need to finish the front on this side. And then it's to join the front and the back. <laughs> so it's just you just do some extra rows here just to get the like so you've got the neckline and then you join the shoulders I done the three needle bind off because I feel it gives it a wee bit more structure than um, anything else and then I have to do the neckline and then I'm onto the sleeves so not much to go ow oh that hurt not much to go on it, can't wait for it to be done. Um, I did try it on and there's a lot of extra stitches uh, because it's sitting on my waist and not around my stomach there is a lot more stitches but that's okay, it's going to be boxy, it's going to be beautiful when it's done. I've seen some of the finished ones and they look phenomenal and I still haven't decided whether or not I'm going to dye the yarn when I'm done. I'm worried that because I have knit it up it's going to come out patchy so I don't know if I'm going to risk it or whether I'm just going to keep it undyed but when I keep it undyed all the cat hair that's on it just becomes way more prominent because I've got two black cats and then a tabby so she is quite dark fur at some places but yeah I am loving this knit. I'm finding it so enjoyable. It's so straightforward. I've not once found a part that I can't do. And I am not a very good sweater knitter. So that's really, really good. I'm really, really enjoying it. I've got to the end of March to get it done. But I reckon if I work on it solidly today, tomorrow, and then throughout the week, I might get it finished before I go away. Which would be really cool. But we'll see. I'm not going to run myself into the ground. I've still got a full week of work to do. And that's running me into the ground. And then. Got to make sure I've got everything packed. I think I've still got a couple of things I need to get before I go. Or at least pack before I go. And then. I've got to start a sock. So that I can take it on the plane. Because I'm starting it in this, this slowly moving into acquisitions by the way. I've had this for a while, just not showing it off. How cool does that look? 
It looks like plaid. This is the BB-8 colorway by Fiberpunk, who is Marcus. He is Glasgow based. He is a very good friend and he dyes amazing self-striping. So this is the BB-8 colourway. And then of course he had to go out and release an R2-D2 colourway before I go on holiday. So had to buy that. Um, and then because he is an absolute dear, because I've got, I've got quite a lot of Marcus's yarn um, because his self-striping and non-self-striping yarns are beautiful. Um, because he's an absolute dear, he popped this one in the mail for me as well. And when I opened the package, like I could feel that there was more than one skein in it, and I was just like, "What's going on? Like, has he maybe mixed up like the orders? Like, I hope not." And then I opened it up, and I was just like, "Oh my god, he is such a sweetheart." And then I, I had a giggle because he sent me a message and he was just like, yeah, I just found the note that should have been in your package. I was like, yeah, I, I've, I was looking for a note to explain the second skein. <laughs> uh, so my cat really liked it because he decided to bite it. He didn't chew it, he just bit it. So he just had it in his mouth. Uh, so he approves of Marcus's yarn. And that's the label, well, that's his old label. I think this is now his new label. I'm not 100% sure. I think he might be trying to get new labels again, but I could be wrong, so don't quote me. So, yep, I have three of Marcus's yarns that I can pop in my stash. So, this is going to get cast on and ready for going on the plane. Uh, I don't know how much plane knitting I'm going to get done because we're going to be up at two o'clock in the morning to be at the airport at three for our flight at six and then we get to then be in the States for one at 1pm their time so that would be what 7pm our time to then not get into the city until roughly 3pm their time which would be 9pm our time so it's gonna be a long long day so I don't know how much knitting I'm gonna get done because I'm gonna be extremely tired but I want it cast on and ready to go um so yep that's hopefully going to be my plain knitting. I'm going to take a crochet project just in case they decide to take my needles off me and I might cry because I do plan on taking my chialgas on my 9 inch circs. So I'm taking a self addressed envelope just to be on the safe side. Um, I have one other acquisition to show off. I only brought one of the balls with me when I actually bought five. And the reason I'm, I bought these is because I actually do have a project in mind for pretty much one of the first times I've ever bought yarn. So I want to make the Love Note sweater, uh, which if you're not sure what it is, I will try and pop a link down below. I haven't bought the pattern yet um, because I want to try and make things that I have the pattern for already. And because at the moment I'm watching the pennies before... I go away. So I bought this last month uh, because I have the yarn for the body. I just don't have, I have one of the yarns for the body. I didn't have the mohair. So I was in John Lewis to find more of this yarn when I found all of this yarn reduced. So that's what it was priced at as the reduced and then I got to the checkout and it was reduced even further. This was four fifty a ball, which is great for Rowan Kids Sell case. So I got five balls in total because I want to make the Love Note sweater with full length sleeves. And yeah, that is on the cards at some point. Again, haven't bought the pattern, so it can't be cast on anytime soon because I have other things I want to make. But yeah, I just thought it was on sale 
it would be really stupid to pass up buying it because of the price and then to find out it was actually even cheaper that's just awesome so that's all the yarn that's all the yarn and all the projects out of the way it'll be itchy ear uh, I'm going to talk about the de-stash and the yarn swap so if that's not your thing, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. But if that is your thing and you are taking part or you want to know more, the we'll start with the D-stash. We're basically, it's not something, no, it's not a D-stash. It's a stash bust. What am I even saying? No, I had enough caffeine today. So, the GC 2020 stash bust is, so it... Target. The GC 2020 stash bust is to help inspire you to work from your stash. I can't say anything because you've just seen three full skeins that are coming into my stash and then five skeins of kids silk haze. But that's Marcus's fault. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Uh, that was completely my fault. I wanted those yarns. I needed those yarns because they're Star Wars. Hello. They're self striping and it's Marcus. So. And then the Kid Silk Haze is because it's genuinely for a project. So the stash bust is to inspire you to work from your stash that you have had before 2020. So if it came into your stash on the 31st of December 2019, it still counts. Uh, but it's also really so that you go deep stash diving and you use stuff that you've had for a couple of years. I know there's some yarn that I've had since, geez, really since I first discovered Indie Dyed Yarn. So at the moment, all we're asking, all I'm asking you to do is either photograph your stash or have it on Ravelry so that you can see what you're using up. I took a photograph of my stash because my Ravelry is not up to date. I don't use it for anything than searching for patterns, buying patterns and using the forums. That's all I really use my Ravelry for. And then the odd messaging. So I don't use it for storing my projects or uploading my stash, although I, I'm thinking of starting to use it for the projects. So if you've got it logged on Ravelry, that's absolutely fine. You do not need to take a picture of it. And then whenever you use up a skein, as long as you're using up the full amount, you can tick that off and say that you've used 100 grams. Or if you know how much it was, like how much it weighed before you use it, say it was 80 grams and you used 60, you've got 20 left. So you can say I used 60 grams of the yarn. So you calculate at the end of it how much yarn you've actually used in weight. I'm not expecting people to know meterage or yardage, just the weight. And every... I was going to try and pick a winner every month, but that's just a lot of pressure for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it every quarter. So the first prize will be the end of March. I'm going to take a winner. I'm going to pick a winner from the chatter thread. And then I might pick somebody from the finished objects thread. And then at the end of the year, the person with the most yardage will win a prize as well. So again, this is just to inspire you to work from your stash. Um, because some of us, not everyone, some of us do have quite a big stash and it's just growing and growing and growing. So this is hopefully to get you to kind of go, oh, I already have the yarn to make this project. I seem to have been using up like a lot of scraps. Uh, so my hat was completely scraps. The, the, I just threw it on the floor. Where's the other one? <laughs> this wasn't so much scraps as someone had sent me a, like just a single ball of it in a swap. So 50 grams really to me is a scrap. So I've used 50 grams in this. I've used 60 grams of the neon. And, oh, I think it was 60 grams. Because I doubled up. The, the neon is fingering, whereas the grey is DK. So I think I used about 60 grams of the neon and then I've used 30, 40 grams of the DK. 
I don't know, I've got it all written down somewhere. Um, and then I know for the sweater, I it should use close to 600 grams for the sweater. And the socks I made on the last podcast, that was 50 grams. So it's, it's things like that. It's just weighing the yarn before you use it or weighing the project after it's done, whichever works for you. And then we've got the charter thread, we've got the finished objects picture thread, and then we've just got the main thread to say how much you've used up. So that you can keep a tally. So feel free to jump into any of those and see what it's all about and to maybe participate. But it should be fun because it has made me think about what yarn I'm using. Um, instead of being like, oh hey, let's go buy something, it's more of a case of, do I have something I could already do, like already use? So yeah, that is the stash bust. And then the other one uh, is a new one. Uh, the thread only started possibly the start of this week, halfway through the week. Um, on the last podcast I offered up the leftovers for the mothy and the squid yarn I'd made my socks out of. And you all seem to love that idea so much. And there was only one skein to go around and it turned out it just, the whole swap thing for that skein just was not a smooth situation for a whole other reason than the people that wanted it. Um, so I've sorted that out in the background. <laughs> and um, so from now on, I've opened up a thread and you just post a picture of what you've got that you would like to offer up. And the hope is that you get back what you give. So if I've got 50 grams of yarn to give, I should be receiving close to 50 back. But it's entirely up to the person that you're swapping with, whether they're going to accept something that you have. Don't get angry if they're not going to accept your swap, because you might have completely different tastes in yarn than they do. So please bear this in mind that just because you want something somebody is offering, they might not go through with it because what you're offering in return is not their taste. So I've also put in a rule to say that nothing under 40 grams. Uh, it would be preferable to be 50 grams or more, um, purely because 50, gram, 50 grams is reasonable. Most people... And I say that because I have a UK size 9 foot. Uh, most people can get a pair of socks out of it. But again, this is entirely up to the people doing the swap. You need to communicate between the two of you. This is not going to sit with me. And then the last rule is that the postage is paid by the person offering the swap. You can't expect somebody else to pay that when you're the one offering the yarn. The only time I would think that people would need to communicate more on this is if you're doing an international swap um, and it's going to cost a fortune. You you need to talk between the two of yourselves whether or not that's going to be okay. So take location into consideration because I know it would cost me about five to ten pounds to send something to the States, even as small as 50 grams, whereas it's only going to cost me three pounds to send it within the UK very possibly Europe. Um, so it's something to take into consideration, but I am certainly not being held responsible for other people's shipping costs, and you can't expect your swapy to pay the price when you're the one doing the swap. So very grey lines for that, but whoever you're doing a swap with, you two need to communicate it together. I'm having nothing to do with it, I'm not going to be moderator in those ones. It is literally up to the person offering the yarn and the person offering back. So, before I say anything else that might confuse the situation, that's it. That's all I'm going to say on it. So feel free to join in. It's I think it's going to be really, really good. Because I, for one, don't like the fact I have about 50 grams of yarn just sitting after I make a pair of socks. So yeah. That sounded like a complete downer to end the podcast on. But I'm going to New York! <laughs> yep. 
Next week there's no podcast. Uh, I won't be called podcasting the weekend after, but I will be re like filming part of my holiday. I'm going to be recording it for like, memory's sake and doing like a kind of diary type thing. Um, I'm going to do it like day to day and then compile the, the data when I come back. So there's going to be nothing from me probably until about two and a half weeks, if not three weeks from now. And that's purely because next week wouldn't be a podcast week anyway. And then the following weekend, I don't fly back until the Sunday. I don't arrive back in the UK until late Monday. Uh, well, I don't arrive back home until late on Monday. And then I'm going to be jet lagged as hell and recovering from the week. Because I do have chronic illnesses, as we have discussed and you might have seen recently on my Instagram. So I'm going to need some recovery time from that. So I took two weeks off work. <laughs> so yeah, uh, as much as there's not going to be a podcast for about two and a half weeks, three weeks, there will be videos from my holiday going up. So look forward to that. And yeah, that's me. I'm away to edit this podcast now, sit in it, hopefully get the shoulder finished and then the neck band done on my jumper. And then tomorrow is Sunday where I'm probably going to spend the day in my jammies watching movies. Because this weather is to be like this for a full week. I looked at the forecast earlier before I started and it's this rain between now and next Monday. Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Leave any comments down below or find me on any of the social medias I mentioned at the start of the podcast and message me there. Uh, yeah, until next time, thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.